Welcome to the CIS 101 video about modifying pictures. The first thing we want to do is review how to load a picture off of the disk and display it. The first command we want to do is pick a file and that allows us to pick um, the, a file off of our hard drive and it returns us the path in a string of where that file is located. So you got to pop up a window. You can go to the folder that has your pictures in it and choose one of them. And the next step is to make picture. And what that does is find the file on your hard drive and read it off of the hard drive and into memory so we can work with it. Now this uh, name right here has to match this name. You can come up with whatever name you want to store the path. And then you just put in the path as input into this picture and then this will return our picture. The uh, last step is just to explore our picture. And when you do explore, you get some controls up here that uh, where you can select a pix pixel and it will tell you what color it is and the X and Y coordinates of that. And you can also use this to select what picture pixel you want to view inside of your picture. Now, hopefully from your reading, you know that a picture is made up of a whole bunch of tiny little pixels and we can figure out how many pixels are inside of our picture. Um, first, we can uh, get our width of our, the picture that we loaded out. Notice I named the picture Arch. So I use that same name in here as input to get width. And it tells me that it's 360 pixels wide. And then we can also get our height that tells us that it's 480 pixels up and down. Now we can come up with any, any name we want. I'll just use pixel and we can get a pixel from our picture. So we give it what pix picture we want to get our pixel from and then the X and Y coordinate. And when we type pixel, it knows the red, green and blue components of that pixel. We can also ask the pixel its X coordinate by saying get X and then typing in the name of the pixel. Notice I named it pixel and it will tell me that its X coordinate is 30 and we can also get its Y coordinate, which is 50. Now, hopefully from your reading, you know that uh, the X and Y coordinate, that the origin starts up here at the very top of the picture. So that's zero, zero. And as you increase X, you move across horizontally, uh, across the picture horizontally. And as you increase Y, you move down the picture vertically. Now we can make a new color with the make color function. This is how much red, green, and blue are in our picture. Since there's a lot of red and not so much green and blue, this is gonna be a pretty red color. And then, just by typing the name of our color, we see that we get that color. And then we could tell the pixel to set its color to that new color that I just, uh, cre just created. And we can explore our uh, arch picture one more time. And we can go to the coordinate 30, 50, and you can see that I've actually changed the color. Remember I did red is 250, green is 20, blue is 10, and we can change that pixel's color. So you can notice there is one pixel right there that I turned to red. I'm not sure if that will show up in the video, but you can try it for yourself. And if you have pretty good eyes, you can see that there's one lone red pixel right there. Now, if we want to get all of the pic pixels out of this picture, there is another function. I'm going to name this uh, PS for pixel, short for pixels. And you can just get the pixels um, of my arch. Now, if you notice the get pixel is singular, so we're just asking for one pixel and we have to tell it what coordinates, the X and Y coordinate to get that pixel. Uh, so which pixel we want. In this case, we're asking for all of the pixels, notice the S, so that's more than one. And it's going to give us all the pixels back. And it's going to give it back to us in something that's called an array. And an array is a, a way to have a lot of values, but only one name. So PS is the only name for this all of my pixels, but it has lots of values, one for each pixel inside of my picture. 
by the way, if I were to press enter right now, it would start printing out all of my pixels. So all of my pixels and it, that will cause it a lot of stuff to print. So if that ever happens to you, you'll have to kill your program and, or you kill JES and launch it back up again to be able to um, stop it from printing out all of those pixels. Now, since uh, PS has a lot of pixels, we can ask for just one of them by telling it which one. And so inside of these square brackets, and you get square brackets by the P key and a USI keyboard, there are square brackets. You don't have to press shift, and they're called square brackets because they have sharp corners on the edges. And so if you put a number inside of there, that tells you which pixel or that gets the first pixel out of my picture. And then we can do one and that gets the second pixel out. And then we can do um, two and that gets us the third pixel. And if you notice, we start counting with zero. So in computer science, you just gotta get used to the fact that we like including zero as a number. So we always start with zero. And that means the first one is at zero, the second one is at one, and the third one is at two. Now, I've talked about built-in functions before. Get pixels is a built-in function. Set color is a built-in function. Explore is a built-in function. Those are all the functions that have been written for you. So you don't have to write them, but you can use them all you want. There are also some built-in colors like red, blue, green, black, white, and those are already predefined for you inside of uh, JES. So if you want to use a basic color, you can probably just guess its name. Let's see if we have pink, and as long as it's predefined, it'll come out. Now let's say a word, uh, a color that might not be as popular like cyan. Um, of course, cyan, it already knows about cyan, so that one won't work. But we could try another color like light green, and notice light green is not defined. So if it says not defined, then you just have to um, figure out what, how much red, green, and blue is in that color and use make color to make it. So since PS has all of our pixels, we can use it to change the color of the pixels inside of our picture. So we can set the color a PS and we'll just set the first pixel to black. And then let's go ahead and set the second pi pixel to black as well. And the third one. And by the way, um, I'm able to get to the previous uh, commands by pressing the up arrow. So I press the up arrow and then I can go back and edit the number and change it to a different number. And so I've uh, set four pixels to black and let's just do a few more for good measure. And one last one. Now, by the way, if you have your picture open still, so you can see your picture, you'll notice that it's not changing. So in order to see the changes as you change their color, you either need to explore your picture again, or there's another function called repaint. And that will cause the changes to show up. But um, I've already closed my uh, window, so I just need to explore my picture again to see those changes I made. And if you look up here at the very top, you'll see a small little black line that I did by changing those pixels. Now, the array of pixels that you get back from Get Pixels just goes across your pic picture like this. So it gets the first row of pixels, then the second row of pixels, then the third row, and it keeps going until you reach the very bottom of your pi picture. Now let's say that we want to change all of our pixels to black. Would you really want to type this in for over 300,000 times? Because that's how many pi pixels are inside of my arch picture. There's actually an easier way to do that, and that is to use a loop. So when you want to repeat something a whole bunch of times, loops are very helpful. So I'm going to write a function called blackout that's going to black out a picture. Now, uh, right here is the input to our function. So if we want our function to take an input to operate on, we just put in a name in between these parentheses. 
Then when we call our function, we have to include that input into our function. And then I'm just going to go tab, and I'm going to go for each pixel in get all of my pixels from my picture. Now don't forget another colon. And then inside of there, we'll just set the color of the pixel to black. Now we need to save our program. We can either click load program that will ask us if we want to save it, or you could go up to the menu to a file menu and click save. You can also hold down control S if you're on a Windows machine or command S if you're on a Mac. Anyway, save it. Go ahead and find a location to save your picture and I'm, uh, to save your program, not your picture. So I'm going to call this blackout.py. Now you can come up with any name you want. You just need to do a period and py. By the way, spaces don't always work out so well when you're coming up with names. So try to avoid spaces when you're saving your file name. So we'll go ahead and uh, save that. Now we need to click load program. I want to show you what happens if you forget to click load program. So I'll just type blackout, which is the name of my function, and it needs some input. So I'm going to give it arch as my input. And it's going to say blackout is not defined. And you're like, well, yeah, it is defined. I defined it up here. Whenever you see an error and you're wondering why it's not changing, look right here. If it says unloaded, that means you just need to click that button. If you click that button and the unloaded has gone, now we know that our changes are loaded in memory. So now we can go ahead and type blackout arch. And I just press the up arrow to go to that previous statement and we'll press enter. And now we can explore our arch and it's completely gone. Now you might be worried that I just erased that picture. Now, I didn't erase the picture off of the disk. I only erased the copy that is in memory. So we can get that picture back by just doing file name equals pick a file. And we can pick our arch file again. And then we can uh, say arch equals make picture and reread this picture off of the disk. And if I spell make picture right. So once again, when you get errors, no need to freak out. Just read the, read the error message. Try to figure out what it's saying. When it ever says something is not defined, look at that name and make sure you spelled it right and capitalized it right. And we can explore our arch. And we got it back because we read a new copy off of the disk. So just because we're changing the copy in memory, it will not save the changes to disk unless you use a write picture to function that you can read about in the book. I just want to explain a little bit more about how this function works. So down here, we're calling the function blackout and we're providing some input. We're calling the input arch. And so that is the picture we loaded off of the disk. So when we pass it in for input inside of the function, Picture will now be another name for that same picture. So picture is a box that points to the arch picture, and arch is another box that points to that picture. So that the arch picture really has two different names. And this right, this for loop right here is a way that we can go through every element in an array. Remember, there's over 100,000 pixels inside of this picture. So what we're saying is for each pixel in all of the pixels of my picture. So this uh, function gets all the pi pixels out of the picture and puts them into an array. And then the for loop goes through each and every pixel. And the first pixel gets out first and it gets this name uh, temporarily, it's just the name of the first pixel. And when we set the color, we change it to black. Then we get the next pixel out, and then we change that one to black. And we get the next pixel out, and we change that one to black, and so on, until we've, met, until we've uh, set every pixel inside of our picture to black. Now, a couple of things on our syntax. Notice the space up here. 
see this blue box? That is grouping all of the instructions that belong to our function. See the colon right here? The colon means that we're going to start what's called a block. And a block is just a way to group instructions together. So this and in JES, it's very helpful because they draw a blue box around our block. So all of these instructions belong to our function. Now we have some more indentation. If you notice, this is indented one more time from our for loop. And notice this blue box. That's a way to group all of the instructions that we want to repeat for each pixel. So we're going to repeat something for each pixel. What are we going to repeat? Whatever's here. So we can do uh, more instructions inside of this for loop. Now, I don't recommend printing anything out because then JES will have to print something out over 170,000 times, which will take quite a while. And you probably don't want to wait around for that to finish.